thriving in the Uber economy. This is not about the car company. So I probably need to change that name a bit because it caused some confusion. But it's more so, it's like saying thriving the Clorox revolution, meaning Uber has upended so many industries and businesses. And what I want to hope to share with you today, what are some ways that you cannot be crushed? I was talking to a gentleman out there, tall guy, he has an app company, and he was saying, well, I'm one of the people who are upending these companies. And so my point is, I want to help small businesses know how do we stop that bleed? How can we not fight against it, but how can we be a part of it and thrive in it? That's what we want to talk about today. So. Uh, I'm at, at Ramon Ray, if any of you are tweeting or anything like that. And of course, remember the uh, hashtag ATT, small business. So um, one, I think rule number one of this aspect of thriving in the Uber economy, in my opinion, is that word of mouth alone doesn't work anymore. This doesn't mean don't welcome, sir. This doesn't mean don't do it, but this means that it requires more. It means that no longer, there's plenty of seats here, you're welcome to sit up here too. You, I won't interrupt anymore. So it means that you can no longer survive by just going back and saying for the seedling marketing company, for example, going to just an event saying, hey, spread the word around. It requires more. That doesn't mean necessarily more money you have to spend, but you may have to invest some more time. But that's really rule number one is that the rules that maybe our parents or our grandparents or that we grew up with saying, I can have my little business on Main Street, I can sit back and sing Kumbaya and watch people walk in, that doesn't work anymore. So what are some things that we do that, that might work? Because I want to give some tips, even though I tell you we need to do more. Networking events, they're great. Go out, do more of them. I encourage you to do that. But I'm saying it's not just enough. Client referrals, definitely do that. That's very important to get customers to refer business to you, absolutely. But what I'm saying, we need to do more, and we'll talk about some of that today. Employee referrals. Those of you who have employees or have contractors, people you work with, are you making them ambassadors for your business? Because if you're not, you should be. And if, and if you're treating them bad, they're already ambassadors for your business because they're saying how you suck behind your back. So it's a win-win situation. So that's one, word of mouth alone, does not work in this new economy we're in. I'm not saying it doesn't work, keep in mind, but I'm saying word of mouth alone it doesn't work. Make sense? Depressing or exciting? Okay, fine. The second one is sales as usual is not enough. Now, why do people always use the graphic image of the, of the kind of the car salesman? I feel sorry for car salesmen sometimes because they're great people. But anyways, so sales as usual is not enough in this economy. And oftentimes, like, what's your name, sir? Jeff. Jeff. And Jeff, what, you're welcome to come on in. And Jeff, what is something that you'd want to buy from me? You want to buy my sweater, right? Say yes. Just say yes. No, no, no. Say yes. yes. Okay, so we'll try that again. Jeff, you want to buy my sweater, right? Yes. Can you say it with excitement? I'd love to. Yeah. I, yeah, there we go, right. <laughs> but I'm not selling it to you. My point is, though, so you want to buy my sweater. You give me money. I give you the sweater. And I say bye. Isn't that how most of us feel sometimes? Most of the transactions we go through are, it's we give money, we get money, and we're done, right? But what I'm advocating to us is that that buying experience even needs to be more pleasurable. The buying experience, what I advocate, needs to be beyond just a simple monetary transaction. Yet what's that feeling that you feel on the radio you hear? Sing it with me if you know the song. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Y'all didn't sing with me. But my point is, don't you feel good and warm, right? Hello? Yeah, I mean, we all may like, might, may like Dunkin' Donuts, but they don't have that song. You can't go Dunkin', it don't even sound right. So my point is, as you're selling, go beyond just the pure monetary transaction. Make it an experience, and you'll find that you will win in the end. Going back to the Uber economy, or the real Uber company, as it were, I, how many take taxis and livery cars and et cetera to go to the airport at different places? How many? Only three people like to raise their hand, Vicky, here. It's just like a really quiet audience. Wow, okay. So some of you know what I mean. I had to call my taxi company and ask them to vacuum out the, backs of the back of the car and make it clean when I ride in it. Should I have to do that? No. So I've given them my money, but it seems like they didn't give enough care about me to make the experience good. You follow me? 
So another thing, put emotion in the sales process. What does Starbucks do very well? And I can continue on with many companies, but what do they do? They ask your name. Yeah, part of the reason they want to write it down so they don't confuse whose coffee it is or whatever you're buying, but doesn't it also make you feel good? Like, what's your name? I'm going to guess your name probably is Ann. Yeah, well, I knew her. She was right. So, so Ann, you're buying a cup of coffee from Starbucks. I ask your name. You, I write it down. Don't you feel good, right? Am I right? All of you feel good with that. So my point is putting emotion into your sales processes can help. Again, the economy is tough. Your, your competitor is only a mouse click away. What are you doing to make people feel warm and good? Make returns easy. Now, this seems like kind of a bad thing in a way. Ramon, my God, but I'm going to lose money. You don't understand how much money you're losing by making people feel like a total schmuck or a jerk by wanting to return something for you. Make it easy. Who does that well? How many have had a good return experience? Who does that very well, company? Who was it, Ann? Payless. Payless. Okay, there we go. Any other ones? Nordstrom, great, okay. Amazon. Am Amazon, that's I was going to say, exactly. Zappos. Zappos, exactly, an Amazon company. So we know these brands, and these are big global brands, but all of us, as small business owners, we can do this as well as my point. Do you follow me? We can all do this too, is make these things good. So I like to buy shirts from Charles Cherwit, British company, some of you may know the brand. When you buy it, they have right in the box, easy return, no question asked. They even pay for the shipping. So this is what I'm trying to get you to see in this digital revolution, in this what I call Uber economy that we're in, it's very important that we change our thinking even to the sales process, that we become to evolve our thinking because again, your competition is so close and you can't afford to not do this. So this is the next step in this. Also keep in mind, over deliver. You promise the client will be there by two, Make sure you're there by one. Now, you don't want them coming out of the shower and freaking them out, but you get my point. Over-deliver. This is how you will survive what I call, welcome, this Uber economy, welcome, or this revolution. Okay? Feel free to come on up. So that's another point. Make the sales process easy, and don't do what traditional uh, salespeople are doing. Make the sales process as easy as possible. Okay. Second thing here is there is a barrier between businesses who leverage technology and those who are not. Did I say something wrong? Okay. There's a barrier between those who are leveraging technology and those who are not. And I'm increasingly seeing this. This does not mean we have to be just propel propeller heads, you know, techies or geeks all day. No. But what I am advocating is that those of you, me, whoever it is, who are using technology to its fullest potential, you're going to find your business is increasing, 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 increasing in value in what you're doing. Other businesses are going to fail or not be so productive. I promise you will see this. So how many of you consider in the room that you're relatively using technology pretty well? Okay. And how many of you like a Catholic confessional to tell me that you know you're not using technology as well as you should? Okay. Very good. What an honest... Three, these are honest people. I could leave like a pack of money right next to you all. Great. She's like, no, I don't know about that. So, <laughs> all right. So, how, what is this barrier? What are some things I'm seeing? Some of these things many, many of you know already. These are not rocket science things, but cloud computing. We heard about that a lot in the conference today. Some of you don't know what it is. Some of you do. But the aspects of online applications, this is not just a fad. In general, unless there's something different, this is the way business is done because it's faster, cheaper, easier. You can write something here, seconds later it's there. You can write it there, seconds later it's here. You follow me? So this aspect of cloud computing for most all small businesses, nothing do I say I, I put in stone. There's always an exception, of course. But in general speaking, you should be using QuickBooks Online or Xero Online or Sage Accounting. You follow me? All these online tools you should be using. Secure computing. We are in an age where hackers and others want to steal your business. They're not just going after Target and big businesses. They want small businesses. Why? Because they know that this gentleman happens to work for the local retail st the store who happens to have an account with the federal government. You follow me? So they're getting smarter. They're not trying to just go to the big dogs or going through people. Okay? So be secure. Document management. Internet access everywhere. We can't afford to be without internet access most of the time. And I'm not talking about the YouTube video of the lady who's on her phone and falls into a pool of water. Not that. 
Uh, collaboration, communication, file sharing, freelance, or the gig economy. These are all ways that small businesses can enhance their business and grow and leverage the power of technology to separate themselves between com businesses that are using technology and between businesses who are not using technology. This is a very real thing, and I see it all the time. And again, some of you, how many were in some of the conferences before? Yeah, okay, and this is not a bad thing, but there was a lot of questions. People asked about what's the difference between LinkedIn and Facebook. It's a valid question, but I was surprised to see that even still, as so much has been going on, many small businesses don't know. So this barrier, it's going to increase massively. And my secret sauce for you, I assume you do some sort of online marketing, I assume? I would, and we don't know each other, as you know what, you can give me a check later for this, but, we don't, but I would suggest you outsource as much as you can do. Myself, I'm a technologist, I know social media, I outsource it to somebody who's A, either smarter than me, or can do it because I don't have the time or the competency. So that's my secret weapon for these things. You, you know what you're doing, right? I, anybody, should, like what, what is your expertise, sir? IT, okay, so for example, are you in the local area here? Yeah, so raise your hand if you don't mind. Yeah, so if you're looking for technology solutions, you can see this gentleman, as I, I would assume, if, it's, if you serve small businesses. You get the point I'm trying to make. You're maybe an expert in, and what do you do, miss? Beauty products. Beauty products. So you're an expert in beauty solutions and et cetera, and you look that part very well, so, but you're not a technologist, right? Don't, please, good, please don't say, because you said, yes, I am. I was like, you messed me up. You would hire him to outsource all that to someone like him. So if you follow me, and that's what I think the best way that small businesses can grow. So you focus on what you do best, beauty and et cetera. There's your IT, there's your social media person. It doesn't mean you shouldn't know it. Now, now if, you're t if you're calling me up at three in the morning, Ramon, I'm, do I right click or left click? How do I close my windows? That's a, I can't, whew, that's a whole nother scale. You need to know something. You know, you need to know what a hashtag is. It's not like marijuana or something, okay? So, no, I'm serious, I'm serious. People just don't know. Okay, every business is ripe for displacement. And really with this uh, scenario, what I want to get you thinking about is that none of our businesses are insulated. And those of you who are out there on Periscope, if we have, a, we have a live audience, feel free to tweet us, share with us. I can't answer right now, but afterwards we can have a discussion too. And thank you for joining. We appreciate it. And if you're following it, if you, those who don't know, it's ATT Small Biz is the uh, Twitter hashtag. So you can look at that as well and see it afterwards, I think. But thank you all for joining us. So hi. So here what I'm thinking is that how many have used travel agents 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 10 years ago? And some are still around, but my friend was in the travel business. The industry is different. Who, who upended them? Who displaced them? TripAdvisor, Expedia, Travelocity, uh, Orbitz, right? I mean, all you do is take, now again, if you want high-end travel and you just don't want to do it, there's still that service. But my point is, you should all be thinking critically about your business. When the president comes to a town, what do they do to, as best they can, secure him today? What do they do? Well, I know because I study this a lot. What do they do? They think like, what, what's, what's, what's your answer? They think oh, yeah, well, that too, yes. <laughs> but they think like a criminal, they th right? If the president is in this room, what are all the ways that someone could kill him? That's how they think. So you need to think the same way. I have a business doing X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Beauty product, for example. What are all the ways that your business could become irrelevant? Now, beauty and health is always going to be there, but my point is the part that you're doing, you know what I mean? Meaning, let me think, what are all the ways, okay, I'm offering in-house care, for example. Is there, you know, 20 years from now, they're going to have robots? Yes. So you get my point. So you need to think, how is the future going to affect your business, or how is it affecting business? Because if you're doing that, you'll be ready. Andy Grove of Intel said what? Only the paranoid survive. And this doesn't mean you sit in your house freaking out, scared, but it doesn't mean you should be aware. A friend of mine was um, in, in, in Brooklyn. I grew up in Brooklyn. Nothing wrong with Brooklyn. Brooklyn's a great place, but some places have more crime than others. And we know Boston is worse than Brooklyn. We know that. But, sorry, I didn't say that. But um, he was walking and talking how he had his headphones on, he had his head down, he was singing, he was under a bridge with no lights, no houses around, it was dark, it was a rainy day, and you know what he told me? He got robbed. I'm like, hello? Not, I didn't mean to say of course, but you weren't aware, you weren't ready. And so that's how we need to be in business. So think about your processes, and I hope that all of you 
Small business owners have welcome, have processes in your business. This is important because that's the only way to scale is to have something repeatable. You follow me? You're selling donuts and you roll, knead, bake. I'm making it up. You can tell I don't know anything about baking. My wife just told me something yesterday. I can't remember. But anyways, you have a certain process. So the key is, is that are these processes old and outdated? Is somebody else doing what you've done? Are you keeping up with the times? This is very important because nowadays when you go into a store, what do they say? We've emailed the receipt to you. For example, do you offer that feature or not? Doesn't mean maybe you have to offer it today, but my point is you need to be aware of these things. What about your brand? Is your brand outdated? Is it old fashioned? Does it need to be refreshed or even changed? I don't know, but that's something you need to think about. Your brand, your identity, is it going with the times? I mean, for example, black guys are shaved heads. Maybe it's out of style. Maybe I should have an afro. I don't know. Y'all can laugh. That was a funny joke. I thought it was very funny. So y'all, we can relax. It's okay. We can relax. Guys on Periscope, relax. Take it easy. Life is too good. Is what I'm selling still relevant? Now, there's a battle, right, between Amazon.com and the startup jet. Now, the reason they're being paid attention, of course, because they've raised quite a bit of capital. It's a good question to ask. Will Jet win or not? I have my personal opinions and we have our favorites, but my point is you get the point I'm making. You have to think about is what I'm selling even relevant? Are the times changing? And the best example of that, of course, is Uber. And this is why I call it the Uber economy. Me being in a very, and you guys too, living in Boston. Are you guys taxi people here? Or not? Who here takes taxis regularly? I'm just curious. Okay, some of us are. Most of you are car, you know, greater Massachusetts area, I'm guessing. But I take taxis and trains a lot, right? So we know what that's like. Uber came in, for many of us who are using the app, it wasn't hard for us to be, should I stand on the corner for 17 minutes in the rain or go click and have a car come? We, millions of us got it. This is my point, meaning, is what I'm selling still relevant or not? And guess what? It wasn't the taxis, in my opinion. It wasn't the cars, right? It was just about the experience. The taxi industries could have had the app, but they got lazy and thought that they made it big. And so enough somebody else had to come. And this goes also to the mindset, am I a bridge builder or am I a barrier? Going back to the beauty business, I'm just not, I'm picking on using you because you're one who I remember. So think, at the end of the day, what are you service? What are you providing? What, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, what are you providing to your clients? And I'm making it up because I'm guessing what you do, but what, what are you providing? I'm providing them with a healthy That's right. And even bigger than that, it, it, one aspect is health. The other aspect is people want to feel darn looking good, Right? Am I right? Especially ladies, am I right? I mean, guys do too, but our looking good is really simple. I get a razor, I kneel over the bathtub, three minutes later, I feel good. Done. Every Friday night without fail, razor and bathtub, done. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Nobody knows? Okay. I guess these guys are like, no, I go to a barber shop. <laughs> All right, so yeah. But my point is that, are you a bridge or a barrier? What I mean by this? Bridges connect people together. Bridges are moldable to some degree. They're a pathway, adaptable. They're not really adaptable in real life, but follow my analogy here. Barriers are stopping people. You follow what I'm saying? Airlines, for example, we all have to get on the plane physically. That's a fact. But how we get that ticket, that's where the bridge comes in. And that's where you learn to adapt. If, and that's what your business should be. What I'm providing, my social media services, going, what's your name, miss? Going back to Danita. So she has social media services. Let's face it. There's a lot of companies that can prepare a tweet. They can type 140 characters. Now, that requires some thought, but follow me here. She's like in her seat like, oh, my God, stop saying it. But my, my point is, is that, but what can't change, for example, is the strategy behind it. You follow me. So my bridge or a barrier. Maybe today you do that service. People pay her a fee to, to prepare that. But maybe in a year or two, you know what? Hire some company. doesn't even have to be in the U.S. However, you pay a fee for it. So this is what I mean by are you a bridge or are you a barrier? And you need to constantly think about that as well. Customers expect speed, convenience, and efficiency. This is something very important for you all to keep thinking about and making sure you're aware of, is that you need to understand what your customers want. If you're giving them terrible service, if your competition is making it fast, making it easy to do business, what are you doing? Going back to the example of Amazon. They now deliver on Sundays. That's kind of old news a year or two, but the point is they deliver on Sundays in some markets, maybe in all markets. That's 
a speed barrier. Why do you think Amazon's getting into the drone program? It sounds silly, we're laughing about it, but guys, in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, my bet, and I'm not a predictor of this, just I'm reading what's on the wall, it's, we're not going to be laughing seeing drones come to those, you know, Amazon will catalog those who probably in apartment buildings, those who have backyards. I'm making it up if it was me. And they're going to say, okay, we've geolocated your backyard. We know you have, you know, a 20 by 20 foot space, and they'll probably give you an Amazon little pin to put in the middle of the yard so the drone can beacon to it. Done. Done. If the drone crashes, throw it away, or we'll have UPS come and pick it up. You follow what I'm saying? This is what I mean by thinking of the future. And you all don't have to have drones, but you need to be aware of this. Efficiency. Do I have processes in my business that are really ridiculously difficult, that are, that are stopping things? And the key is you want to think about this because that's something that's different. It's not price oftentimes. People complain about the uh, Uber uh, surge pricing. If, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but surge pricing, they have time and a half or ten, seven, six times more for areas. I don't know where I stand on that, but guess what? I've paid surge pricing sometimes. Amazon, uh, Uber knows that. You follow what I'm saying? Is that because what's the end of the day, like I talked about the beauty business? It's not the car. It's because I don't want to stand outside in the cold. It's because I need to get home. And it, Uber knows that. You all need to think also, what is the end result of what you're trying to accomplish? This is the goal to think about. And we all have to think about that, okay? So, uh, moving on here. Strong personal brand. I speak about branding quite a bit. It's a personal, um, I love to use big words, Vicky, but I don't know big words, so I stumble all the time. I love, to, I love uh, personal branding. It's a very passion of mine, P-A-S-S-I-O-N. That's only seven, six characters. Okay, I could do better. But I love personal branding because I think it's something that all small businesses can do. How many think they have a pretty strong personal brand? You can admit it, okay, great, okay, good, some people. And some of you probably know you do, but you're afraid I'm going to call you out or something. I'm not, it's okay. So in my opinion, a brand is what separates you as an individual from your company. Okay, so let's take AT&T as an example. AT&T is a brand. We all know the AT&T logo and the brand. Doom, 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 something like that, I think. So let's say you're an AT&T employee and you're active on social, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That would be a strong brand. You're known for who you are overall, right? But you're also companies known. That's what I mean by brand. So now I've done that personally for what I do myself. So not because I'm anything, I'm just sharing with you because I want to give you some tips on how to do it. So if you Google Ramon Ray, for example, not Raymond, not Ramoncito, not Aureli, just Ramon, okay? I'll be the first dozens of hundreds of links that come up because I've built my brand. Okay? I, I'm an author, I've written books and etc. So I have Smart Hustle Magazine, I have some of my companies, yes, but I also have my own brand because I've worked to get it. Okay? So uh, as an example, um, what's your first name? With Elo? Um, Carrie. So uh, um, I was on MSNBC two Sundays ago and I demoed one of Carrie's products. Actually, one of AT&T's products as well because MSNBC called me and said, Ramon, can you be on TV? So it happened with Fox as well. So how can you build your personal brand? How can you break out and be invited to speak at events? Go beyond just, um, uh, what's your name, sir? Ricky. Ricky. You are tired, Ricky, aren't you? You've been out all day long. I'm not tired. You're not tired? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> who are you talking to me like you're tired? <laughs> but um, Ricky, um, so Ricky's an IT person, right? He's a technologist, consultant. Do you deal with small business or big business? Just tell us a little bit about what you do. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Explain a little bit your business. Okay. Hi, what's your name? Marquia, nice to meet you. Welcome. So two IT people. Great. Okay. Okay. Stylist and IT, fine. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, so it's not tech like I thought repairing people's computers. For I understand. Got it. So you are techie in your own right. So for sake of this discussion, you are an IT tech and you're going to service all these clients right here, okay, for sake of this discussion. So my point is, if you wanted to be known as beyond just a tech person, you would then do some things I'm going to share here so that not only do they call the stylist company and the, with the IT, but that people know you and people know you as individuals. You follow me? When Oprah's having her uh, 10 best things to do for your hair, they're calling you or you. You follow what I'm saying? So here's some things to do. One, I'm a firm believer that Every business owner, every business owner is a publisher. 
Every one of you should be a publisher. You should think of that, just like the old school is. You know, you have a, a single person, small business owner. Somebody asks, do you have a sales team? They say, no, wrong answer. You are in sales. You follow what I'm saying? So everyone is a publisher. That's my point number one. You should drill that into your head. Sleep with it. Walk with it. What am I writing? What am I blogging about? What am I posting on social media? What am I tweeting about? Whatever it is. You don't have to do it crazy like maybe me and Vicky do. We're nuts with it. But we're like, uh, Danita? No. Danita yeah. does. But you get my point. All of you should have the mindset, I'm doing X. I'm do in health and beauty, I need to let the world, my target audience, know what I'm doing. So this is what I mean by everyone needs to have a publisher's mindset. What am I doing to let the greater world economy, whatever it is, know about what I'm doing? You follow me? Makes sense. And does it make sense? Are you still with me? Are we sinking here still? Okay, yes. good, 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 awesome. Anne's like, you know what? Anytime I see Ramon's name, I am never going to another event where this man is at. <laughs> All right, or maybe she's not. Leverage the power of social content. I don't have, I give whole seminars on this. I'm not going to go deep into it today. I gave it in the last Small Business Expo in Boston. But the point is, leverage the power of social media. And again, I'll, I'll give some tips on this later, but I just want you to keep that in your mind. It's real. It works. It's transformed my business. It's transformed it in leaps and bounds. A few years ago, I was interviewing President Obama in his first Google Hangout. That took me to another level. And then I did something else, something else. Now I'm here today. So social media, it worked. It's 3 o'clock this morning, I did a video with me on Amtrak coming up from New Jersey. I was half asleep, nodding. I still took the video and shared it. I mean... You know, hey, that's just me. So I've done videos in the shower, too, and those are just crazy. But anyways, I mean, I have clothing on. So third thing is publish a book. Why do you want to publish a book? A book gives you credibility and makes you the thought leader. Now, you have to be it, of course, too. You could be blowing smoke. But the point is, when, you know, you're in the, in the salon business, IT, whatever it is, you're here, someone else is here, they don't have a book, you have a book. Sorry, Periscope guys, you guys are probably like, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> they have a book and you have a book and you're both the same. Who are you going to pick? The dude or the gal with the book. You follow what I'm saying, right? Because we all want to make least mistakes. The book's just like, well, she has the book. You don't. I'll hire her. Okay? So publish a book. Organize an event. You don't have to do a big event like this, but you can use Meetup. You can use Eventbrite. Those are two tools, Eventbrite, Meetup, and other tools to organize a small event or a big event. I produced an event in New York City called the Small Business Summit. I did it for about nine years and I sold it. That was one of the most, another marquee event that boosted my personal brand. Why? Because when you do an event, whatever you want to call it, the, the healthcare forum, 10 of your friends, the, 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 the salon, whatever it may be, whatever you guys are doing, you call it that, you're the big dog. Do you follow me? Even if it's 10 people, 50 people, 100 people, you're doing an event, people are coming to see you, and guess what happened at one of my events? MSNBC came to one of my events many years ago. Did you remember when I mentioned their name before, where I was on it two Sundays ago? You're following the connection. It's a beautiful world, a beautiful world. Christine Quinn, uh, a, one of the kind of the um, head of the city council of New York City, came to my event uh, at one point. It was amazing. Now, she was running for office, so politicians want to be at these events. But the point is, when you do an event, it boosts your brand. Get media attention. It's not easy to do, but it's doable. And again, I give clinics on this and all kinds of things on this as well, but get media attention. You all are qualified to be on TV, on radio, in magazines. Now, some of you may have to learn different skill sets if you don't have it. Some of you may have to learn how to speak better. Some of you have to learn how to talk in bullet points or whatever it is. But if I can be on media, I can't spell, I speak too fast, sometimes spit comes out of my mouth and I slur my words, trust me, y'all can be on TV. Trust me. Trust me. I was with Maria Bartiroma four weeks ago and she loved me. Trust me. But that's because, you know, I did that bathtub thing. So, all right, moving on. So getting media attention, all of you can do it. Okay, how many of you know how to speak in quick bullet points? Correct. That's one secret. How many of you have a product or yourself have an amazing kick butt story that people just go, oh wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so you're all boring people. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Maybe you can't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right, but you can how many have amazing customers? Okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, good, good. <laughs> speak at events. Doing things like this helps build your brand. You do it over and over and over again. People gravitate towards you. They see you. And listen, I'm standing here. doesn't mean I'm anything, but I'm the center of attention now, right? I'm just teaching, being frank. So imagine you're doing 
events on a regular basis that build your brand. You're speaking at the local chamber event, speaking at the entrepreneur event, speaking at whatever you're doing in your industries. It builds your brand. You can videotape it. Have a friend come with their phone and take it, right? Share with us on AT&T's business circle, bizcircle.att.com. Check it out. And networking at events. Now, networking is a very easy to do, but not everybody does it right. And there's ways to do it right, ways to do it wrong. Some ways to do it wrong are, I don't know Vicky from Adam. She doesn't know me from Adam. What do people often do? Hi, can I have your card? I could be an axe murderer. Why do you want my card? First, talk to people. Say hi. See if we're a fit. You follow me? And then talk to be friendly, be nice, and give people space. I can go on to that. Again, that's something I talk about a lot too, networking. But there's an art to it, to successful networking. Very important to consider that. So moving on. Our world is mobile first. A uh, few other points, I think, after that one, then we'll be done. Uh, our world is mobile first world, and this is just to get you oriented and thinking. Everything that you're doing in your business, everything, you should be doing thinking mobile in mind. Definitely your website, definitely your blog. It's a mobile first world, and I'll leave it at that, but I want you to keep that in your mind. People, yes, are looking at PCs and computers and iPads and things like this, but most people are doing what? all day long, looking at a three-inch screen, okay? A few more points we have. Again, those of you who came late, I'm at, at Ramon Ray or eight, at ATT Small Biz. Thanks for coming, sir, at ATT Small Biz, and you can connect with me, connect with ATT. Join us on the business circle as well. Share with us your thoughts, your ideas, okay? So a few more points, and I'll take your questions. Um, if you have any, I don't have any answers, so all I take is questions. Um, no, I'm serious. Y'all think I'm joking, Vicky. They think I'm joking. I'm serious. Um, Hyper-local targeting works best don't target everyone. This is important. Um, this, if you don't mind, what, what are you selling? What, what's your product? Consulting. Oh, what kind? Um, pharmaceutical. Okay, so you're, you're, you're consulting to large companies. Yeah. Okay, great. So I would pretend that I knew what that was, but I'm not going to even try that. But it sounds cool. It sounds like smart people do it. So, um, but the point is, even yourself, don't try to say, I target to all pharmaceuticals. Maybe I target to pharmaceuticals who have products to help men. I'm making it up. Who are older? Whatever. You know, I don't know the industry, but you follow what I mean. Narrow, narrow, narrow is my point. So many of us look at the world like this. I'm selling to everyone. It's my big box of Cheerios. Anybody love Cheerios? Honey Nut Cheerios with milk inside by 11 o'clock at night while, while Hulu's on? I mean, that's just, you can feel the, you feel the warmth, right? You can, oh! And then after that, a little box of Doritos with some salsa dip and a root beer. Oh! <sighs> And then a Snicker bar. Oh, man. One more thing. Warm pound cake. Two slices, 30 seconds in the microwave. Then you put ice cream with strawberry from Hagen Dodge in that bad boy. That is like awesome. But what I encourage you to do, instead of thinking of the whole world like a box of Cheerios, focus. Focus. Because as you're looking at, I'm trying to sell to all these people, and I'll use an example. Me and my wife have a business. It's a day. As I'm talking and using keywords, I want you to start raising your hand as you're interested, okay? Seriously, okay? We're going to play a game here. I want to show you something. Me and my wife, no hands went up, they're like, no, I'm interested. <laughs> Have a daycare business for, small, for children 12 years old and under, even if you're remotely interested or not. And you can keep raising your hand up now, yeah. Okay, 12 years old and under, it's free. And it's all across the country. And as part of your child coming, we give you free college education for life. Only thing is you have to be willing to move to Connecticut. Okay, okay. You so, so what I just did, because a lot of hands went up. So Carrie raised her hand. Ma, you know, interested. She doesn't mean she's going to buy, but the point is, with all that I said, right, I spit out information, I should ignore everybody, and if, they, if it wasn't being recorded, I'd walk to you, Carrie, and focus just on Carrie. Do you see the example I'm giving? And you need to do this in your business, because instead of me wasting my time, what's your name again? Marquia. I'm going to Marquia, say Marquia, but you know, she raised her hand on some things, but she already knows what I said. So eventually I can, but I can let other tools, you know, CRM or other things target her. But for me, my point is going back to targeting, focus on carry. And I'm, again, you have to extrapolate this to your own marketing. But you follow me, you have a lot of carries out there that you're ignoring because you're trying to focus on everybody. And it's something that you'll learn will help you. And this picture, instead of just looking like this, when you look close, it looks like that, which is meaning a lot of pink Cheerios. Follow what I mean? Make sense? So start to think about that. Target, 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 narrow. So benefits of targeting are small businesses can't afford to sell to everyone. 
A company like Jet or Amazon, they can spend billions to reach mass consumers, or AT&T for that matter. It's a company selling to most everyone who, who needs a cell phone, right? So they're a larger company. They can do that. For us very small businesses, we can't do that. Selling to everyone really means you're selling to no one. That's really what it means. You know, we have this clicker. We're selling to everybody. No, you're, you're not. Everyone doesn't use clickers like this. I don't. This is a clicker by Targus. Targus, I love you. Nice. But I like, prefer Kingsington. So anyways, um, if you specialize more, you can command a higher price. Let's take the proverbial Mercedes-Benz. Many of you probably have one, but you get the point I'm making, Mercedes-Benz. It's a higher ticket car, right? It's, you know, for if you have more money, whatever it is, you get my point. So that's why it's more pricey, but a Toyota Camry, it's less. You, I think you understand these things. More focus also means you can focus on higher quality clients. So I'm not saying you should do this, Danita. I'm not saying you should do it, but as an example, let's say you said, Ramon, I'm targeting only real estate agents who sell high-end homes. Let's pretend that was your social media. That's what you did. Yeah, you're like, oh, Ramon, I'm going to give up all this extra revenue. But that means they'll be able to spread the word faster to a tighter audience. You can command higher fees. You're learning faster. Follow me. And you're eating more expensive food because they only sell to high-end people. So you're going to all the, the galas. So you get my point. Targeting, targeting, targeting. It's almost four, so we'll be done in about five minutes. Social kinds, again, Periscope team, thank you for watching us today. Thank you for watching me. And um, I hope you've only said good things to the ATT Small Biz or Ramon Ray uh, Twitter handles. So um, if you haven't, I'm going to sick uh, Danita on you. So social content marketing is not everything, but it's important. So here I'm going to give you my quick tip for those of you who are not comfortable with social media as we get ready to come to an end, how you can leverage social media in your business for Key simple points that I found helpful, but again, Vicky is like a social media ninja. You are, so they may be laughing inside. Oh, I would add a fifth tip. <laughs> so <laughs> Vicky's like, no. So free, F-R-E-A. Frequency, relevancy, engagement, analytics. Frequency, in simplistic terms, if you're out of sight, you are out of mind. Bottom line. And I'm going to ask a very personal question, very sensitive question here. Very sensitive question. If you've ever kissed anyone or anything, any pet in your life, can you just raise your hand? If you haven't, it's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We're all family here. Okay, so four people have kissed. Pretty much this side of the room and one over here are kind of the lovers. This middle of the room here is not lovers. I mean, you look like a lover, man. I'm surprised you haven't raised your hand. Anyways, okay. So these people here have kissed. This lady here has kissed, but these people here are not kissing type. That's fine. So you all won't know what we're talking about. They won't know that experience. That's fine. Um, but you need to do it often, right? If you do it too little... People will think, or the dog or cat, whatever you're kissing, the tree bark will think they're not loved, right? If you kiss too much, people are going to think you are a freak, right? This is what social media is like, okay? You have to do it. I'm not going to, again, my, I give clinics on this. I'm not going to tell you how the, con the type of time is too much, but you need to do it at the right frequency, okay? Relevancy is important as well, okay? There was a church once, and a gentleman sat down in the chair, um, he sat down in the chair, and uh, he was in the chair here with his wife, and he went to the bathroom. So he got up and went to the bathroom. He came back and sat down in the chair again, he listened to the pastor and put his arm around him, and it wasn't his wife. It was the wrong woman. So the point I'm making is that you have to be relevant. If you tell me you're all about health and beauty, I don't give a darn about your cat spot. I don't care one bit. I don't care who you broke up with, who you like. It's irrelevant to me. Now, until your brand grows, of course, you know, it's millions and millions, Miley Cyrus and all these people talk about what they eat for breakfast. But for us normal people, you get my point? Be relevant. Be on point. If you're talking about pharmaceuticals, pharma, I can't even pronounce the words, I told you. Pharma, it's like cuticle remover or cuticle, I'm not sure. But pharmaceuticals, um, focus on that. Don't be divergent. And I'm coming to an end soon. Engagement's important. Engagement's important. All, all of us kissers, how many like a good kiss? Y'all know what we're talking about. But those, yeah. So y'all, they're like, wow, what does that mean, right? So we like a good kiss. So that's kind of like engagement. Nobody wants a boring kiss. What's that? You want a real kiss. And this is what engagement is like. When you're posting on social media, when you're leveraging social media, make it interesting. Your social content should be so interesting that other people want to share it. Now, stop. I've been married 20 years, so nobody's sharing my woman, but you get my point. Okay? Analytics, last point. Make sure that you measure what you're doing. And forget the kissing analogy now. We can go off the chart with this. But <laughs> analytics, 
You want to measure the um, success or lack thereof of what you're doing on social media. And, and, and the example I'll give as we, again, I'm going to come to an end in about two minutes, but as, as, as an example to help you, your, um, anybody else can shout out one of their businesses or what they're doing? I know what Ela does at Pharmaceutical. Anybody else? Okay, we'll go back to health and beauty. So health and beauty, we'll go back to you all now. Um, you're, you're on Twitter posting and say, we're targeting, um, we're targeting Spanish women. We're targeting Spanish women who have uh, maybe uh, uh, large families. Or tar Spanish women who have small families who live in Queens, New York. But let's say you're looking at your metrics and say, wait a minute. Why do we have all these black girls that are teenagers in Mount Vernon? Y'all follow what I mean? They thought their metric was one type of woman and realize it, it's a whole other age and another type of woman. Do you follow what I'm trying to bring out here? You need, that's why you need to measure your social content. Measure what you're doing because you may be char targeting group A. We're targeting truck drivers for our safety belts. I'm making it up. But you realize race, that's okay. Yeah, we'll be done in five minutes. That's okay, five minutes, thank you so much. Periscope, that was just a, the awesome Small Business Expo people telling me I need to shut up and move on. We'll do that in two seconds. So, analytics, measure what you're doing, bottom line, okay? Um, design matters, how your business looks is very important. Those of you who do your own design, yes? Now, you guys, because you guys know I'm going to burn you when you raise your hand. Yeah, you do your own design and it sucks. Stop doing that nonsense, okay? Hire a professional and get it done right. Canva, maybe. So, design matters. Okay, it really matters. Okay, so moving on, even how you look matters, I think. Okay, one day I was at an event, I won't say, I was gonna take my pants ripped and I had to tape it with duct tape, but that was a miserable time. Deeper connection to customers is important. How many send thank you cards? Handmade letters, I do. And one service I found today, actually, I'm gonna use them with my team is, um, I don't know if y'all saw the card, y'all passed the card vendor today? Yeah, so Postable, and of course, Vistaprint has services as well. So that's just my point is, deeper connection, deeper connection to your customers, it's important. Okay, uh, and last slide here really is telling you that, and again, I know after this, you guys have to leave and I'm gonna leave, but just to remind you, visit us on Business Circle, businesscircle.att.com. If you wanna touch base with me, you can just Google my name, Ramon Ray, I'll be glad. If you wanna copy the PowerPoint, give me your cards and I'll email that to you as well. Um, uh, but your marketing must change, okay? Um, but you don't have to change. And I was just gonna tell you one other thing, but I think I'll, the point is this is a sales strategy that I've learned, attract, sell, and wow. But how about this? If you email this to me, I'll tell you about this by email because I want to be able to respectful of the expo. Um, but I have these slides that order your, your business strategies must change, but your, your business tactics and strategies must adapt and change. But the point I'm trying to make here is that your core value should never change. That's what I want to bring home. Is that we talked about a lot of changes today and you have to make changes. You have to adapt, but never change your who you are unless you're a total moron. You never change who you are as a person. You follow me? Technology will change, people will change, but your core values, your ethos, ethos, am I saying that right? E-T-H-O-S, ethos? Okay, good. Um, must never change. So, um, bistrickle.att.com, join us there, and really, that's about it. So you can tweet me, and if I can give you the PowerPoint, give me your card, and can we thank AT&T, and that's it. Thank you all. <laughs> Bye, Periscope people.